Hey guys, CB Super. So the question was asked how to take a 3D object and animate that along a 2D motion path. Now I actually already made a video on animating along a 2D motion path. I'm gonna use the exact same technique as I did in that video. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new fusion composition. So I'm gonna right click, new fusion composition. Five seconds is fine, create. And I'm gonna drop this down onto my timeline and then jump over to fusion. I'm gonna open up my media pool. I already have this UAV footage. It's actually not footage, it's just an image. I'm gonna drop this onto my node panel and let's take a look at it real quick. So the first thing we notice is that it's 1920 by 1205, which is not 1920 by 1080. And my composition is 1920 by 1080. So I actually wanna set the resolution. So to do that, I'm gonna bring down a background node, which you can find right here in the toolbar. I just bring this down. I'm gonna grab the output of this background node and I'm gonna drop it into the media out. What that's gonna do is that's gonna set our background resolution as 1920 by 1080, as you can see up here in the upper right. Now I'm not gonna need this media pool, so I can go ahead and left click to get rid of it. I'm gonna bring this media up and I can now merge this media on top of this background by holding the output and just dropping it onto the output of the background. That's going to automatically merge it. So if I hold down command and I scroll out with my middle mouse button, we'll see that it has now conformed it to 1920 by 1080. Now you can see we cut off the pixels up here on the top and the bottom, but that's okay because I'm actually going to resize this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this media and then I'm gonna click on this transform node. Let's click on the transform node and I'm just gonna size it up just so I have a little bit more of this bend and then I'm going to pull it off here just so I can see more of the road because I'm going to use this road to create my motion path. Now I need to make that motion path. So to make that motion path I'm actually going to use a polygon mask node. So I can just left click on this polygon mask node and it'll drop this polygon right here in the center of the node panel. I don't need to connect it to anything. In fact all I need to do is click on it and now I can create my motion path just by adding some points. So if I start adding a couple of points over here you'll see that I've created a motion path. Now, it's not the motion path that we probably want. We probably wanted to follow this path a little bit more. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and come up here to this modify only button. I'm gonna go ahead and left click on that. I can also use the hotkey of command and control M. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these points and shift S on my keyboard will soften those points. I can come in here and I can control each one of these handles. But to be honest, I don't really want this many points. Having this many points gives our object more opportunity to start spinning around and acting really strange when it hits any one of these tangent points. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this point right here. I'm gonna delete that, select this one and delete it as well. Now I need to use this tangent to try and reshape this line so that it will cover the entire angle. The less points that you use on a polyline, the better. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out and I'm going to reshape this one here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the right. But you'll notice when I grab this tangent handle, it moves both of these and I don't necessarily want this left side to move. So I'm gonna hold down command or control and then grab this tangent handle and now I can move this independently of the other handle. So now it's just a matter of reshaping this line so it makes a little bit more sense for our motion path. All right, so that's done. I don't need to play around with this anymore. There's a couple more things that I need to do. I just need to prep this polygon to be a motion path. With the polygon selected, I'm gonna hit F2 on my keyboard to rename it, and I'm just gonna call it path. And then over here where it says right click here for shape animation, I'm just gonna right click, come down to remove polygon polyline, and then I'm gonna right click again, and I wanna hit publish. Now I can just move it off to the side. I won't actually need that path anymore unless I have to change the actual path. All right, next step will be to bring in some kind of 3D object. Now I can either create a 3D object in another program or I can download a 3D object from the web or I can just create it right here inside of Fusion, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So to do that, I'm just going to bring in a 3D shape. I'm also gonna click on the Merge 3D and a Render 3D node. So I can just move these off over here to the side. And if I take this Merge 3D node and I load it into the viewer, we can see the 3D viewport. Now to move around inside of the 3D view, I'm gonna be using my middle mouse button for the most part. If I just hold the middle mouse button, you'll see I pan left, right, up and down. If I hold down the command key and I scroll on the middle mouse button, you'll see it zooms in and out. And then if I hold down the option or alt key, use the middle mouse button, now I can actually orbit around an object. So if I get too far away and I click on this object, now I hit F on the keyboard, it will reframe or focus on that object. And and that's gonna be key when we get too far away or if we need to get a little bit closer. So if I look at the Merge 3D node, it's as if I'm looking at the 3D scene with all of my 3D objects inside of it. 
But if I look at the render 3D node, you'll see that it looks like a 2D rendered version of whatever the camera is looking at. Now there is no camera that's actually inside my scene. So it's using a default camera that is just facing that object. Now, normally when we're building out 3D scenes inside of Fusion, we would actually add a camera. But for this, I'm not going to add a camera just to simplify the scene a bit. And because we're only adding in one object, it's gonna be our sphere. We don't really need to see the perspective of that object in relation to anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the output of the render 3D node, and I'm gonna drop it on the output of this merge node. What that's gonna do is that's gonna merge this 3D scene on top of our 2D scene. I'm gonna take the media out, and I'm just gonna drop it in the right side so we can see that our plane is now sitting above our object. So we don't want this to be a plane, we want this to be a sphere. So let's come back into the shape 3D node, and over here on the right, we'll change it from plane to sphere. And you'll notice it's pretty large, so we can go ahead and decrease the radius. I don't want to make it too small because I want to look at the textures before I start playing around with it. If we want to texture it, we can either bring in our own texture, we could put that on our object, or we could create one inside of Fusion. We could also simply come over here and we could recolor it if we wanted to recolor it. Now we can't really see any form, and that's because we don't have any lighting enabled inside of our scene. So let's come into the render node and let's just enable the lighting and shadows. Now by default, there is no lighting in the scene. We haven't brought in any lights. So it's gonna be completely black. Let's go ahead and select the 3D merge. And then I'm gonna shift space to bring up the quick tool select. I'm gonna type in the word light. And now I'm gonna bring in a directional light first. Hit add. And I'm just gonna bring it up here a little bit above the merge for now. So now we can see that our 3D object is a sphere and it does have some kind of specular highlight. We can also see the shadowing on the side here. So we can move this 3D light. The 3D light won't actually be visible in the scene. So I can go ahead and move it off to the side. It doesn't really matter where it is because think of it as like the sun and where we want the sun. Now let's zoom into our image real quickly. So it's kind of hard to tell where the shadows actually are in this image because it's such a top-down image. But it appears that our shadows are moving in this direction. I think what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna have our shadows maybe up here on the top edge. So in order to do that, all we have to do is click on the actual directional light. We can start rotating it around until we get our shadows mainly on this upper left edge here. Let's go ahead and go over to the translation side and over here under rotation, just start rotating it until we get our specular highlight off to the right bottom, something like that. Now that's a pretty harsh shadow and that might be more than we actually want. So there's a way that we can soften that up a bit. So click on the Merge 3D, shift space again, and type in the word light again. This time we're gonna bring in the ambient light. And there we go, it automatically softens those shadows. So think of this as like a fill light, except for it's filling all over. So sometimes if you bring in too much ambient light, you're essentially going to flatten your image again. So if I was to turn up the intensity, you can see it essentially flattens it out. Now I still have the specular highlight from the directional light, but you can see there's almost no shape inside of this sphere now at the edge here. So let's go ahead and turn that down. We don't want to use it too much. We just want to use it to soften the shadows just a little bit. In fact, we can even turn down the directional light if we need to, if that specular highlight is a little bit too much. We can also come into the shape 3D itself and under specular, we can come down and we can turn, we can play with the intensity and the exponent to change the way that that specular highlight looks. Maybe something like that. Now I don't actually want this red color. I want to bring in a texture because I want to be able to see when I start to rotate this sphere around. So let's come into the effects library under templates. I'm going to go ahead and twirl down over to where it says shaders. And we actually have a bunch of pre-made shaders loaded with Fusion already. Now, some of these are better than others. I'm going to go ahead and bring this rusty metal in and I'm going to connect it directly to the shape 3D node. Now we can see what it's doing. It has this interesting looking pattern. You can also take these shaders and you can load it directly into the viewport and you can kind of move it around using the middle mouse button to see what the different lighting looks like. So it's a pretty interesting texture. I'm just going to take this shape 3D, put it in there, and now we can see the shape 3D node with the texture applied. So one thing we can do is we can actually animate our object to rotate around so it'll look like it's moving on its own axis even though when it starts to follow this line. So to do that, we're just gonna do a normal keyframe animation. So let's come into the shape 3D node. I wanna come over to the transform section and down here at rotation, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna hit each one of these for X, Y, and Z. Those are gonna drop down keyframes at frame zero. Now I'm gonna come all the way to the end of the animation and I'm just gonna rotate these around a bit. So the last thing that we're gonna to wanna to do inside this shape 3D node is make it smaller because it's really big. So let's go ahead and scale it down, maybe something like that. So it kind of looks like this animating planet, if you will. 
I'm not going to need this left monitor anymore, so I'm going to just drop down to one monitor and get rid of this effects library and give myself just a little bit more room. And let's take a look at our animation. So as of right now, all it does is it spins around and it kind of starts to rotate in different angles from zero frame all the way to 119. So now we want to place it along our motion path. Now this is going to be the same process of taking just about anything in 2D and placing it on a motion path. I'm going to come over to the render 3D node because I want to place this transform after the render 3D node. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the transform button. And then inside the transform, I want to come over to where it says center. I want to right click on center and I want to click on this one called path. Left click on path. You'll notice that the modifiers now opens up. You also see that there's a keyframe put down on center. That just means that there's something else controlling center. So let's go over to the modifier section. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this keyframe that's already on displacement. And then I want to right click on here for shape animation and I want to connect to path polyline and over to value. Left click on value and you'll see it automatically jumps to the beginning of your line. Now double click on the path one and this displacement is what is going to control its movement along this path. So if you want to start it on the other side of the line, you can just have the displacement all the way to the right. Or if you want to have it start at the beginning, just have it all the way slid to the left. Now we want to animate this. Let's come over to displacement and we'll click on the keyframe, come all the way down to the end of 120 and I'm just going to slide displacement all the way to the right. Now let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's jump out and let it cache and then we'll take a look at the animation. Okay, that took about 30 seconds to cache. I'm going to go ahead and hit spacebar to preview it and now we can see that our sphere is inside of our scene and it's animating. So one thing we'll notice is that we don't have very realistic lighting. We also don't have any shadows along our 2D image, our 2D background. So we have to find ways to integrate 2D shadows either into our background. And there's a lot of different ways we could do that. But to be honest, none of them are going to be amazing other than just painting those shadows in by either by hand or by reanimating another object to be a shadow pass that will pass along the ground here. So this is kind of a cheat, but it definitely works. Now, if you really wanted it to look a little bit better, you could actually go inside of another program called Blender, which is where we could probably get a much better result using geometry and ray trace shadows. But we'll save that for another day. All right, I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Yeah.